الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد tonight in short Allah will continue with a lesson in the book and the mulaqis al fiqh by Sheikh Saleh Fawzan Hafid Allah and uh, we're discussing concerning kitab al janaiz or janaza <coughs> and uh, we have reached up to the point where uh, regarding that uh, we had ended in the last lesson uh, matters relating to al ghusl concerning ghusl uh, al mayt where he covers certain masahil that relates to the washing of the, the deceased so uh, and to be and uh, before we left off we'll add a few more uh, masahil that were not uh, mentioned so regarding al ghusl we'll add a few more masail so we had discussed concerning uh, most of the masail that he covers here uh, at the end <coughs> we had mentioned regarding that he discussed concerning that yustahab liman ghassala al mayt an yaghtasil ba'da taghsili that uh, daughter hafdullah uh, he mentioned at the end of this discussion that uh, <coughs> Of those things that he that uh, he take that he sees as being mustahab is that the person who washes the deceased then one also should take a ghusl. Uh, but he owes that, that this is not uh, wajib, so it is mustahab for a person who wash the deceased for them also to, for them to uh, to make uh, al ghusl. And uh, this is concerned that uh, we mentioned that is a hadith that discussed this particular uh, this. And also the hadith is uh, of Abu Hurairah Ta'ala regarding man ghassal al-mayt fal yaqtasil wa man hamalahu fal yatawadda that uh, the hadith in the Abu Ta'ud with Tirmidhi that uh, there is a discussion regarding this particular hadith regarding uh, it being authentic uh, or not we will find <coughs> so after discussing that the ulama mentioned the hadith is actually something which is uh, as we had mentioned it is uh, a mawkuf upon the sahabi and not per se a hadith so uh, based upon this particular hadith that some of the ulama all that it is still mustahab or muba for the person who after washing the deceased then they can take a ghusl based upon its narration on some of the, the sahaba other thing that uh, were to be added is regarding that uh, of those matters regarding al ghusl that relates to a janaza <coughs> that is not per se mentioned here is uh, matter regarding that uh, we have several cases concerning that ghusl is generally concerning is to be done for everyone who's a Muslim but we have a case regarding a person who is one a shaheed the person who died as a shaheed is that person to be washed uh, as there are certain exem- uh, exemption for them regarding the rules of janaza so the person who is a shaheed and shaheed that the ulama have mentioned that uh, <coughs> the word shaheed it is mentioned or uh, uh, relates to two group of people one concerning shaheed fil maraka mal kuffar the one who dies on the battlefield against the kuffar so that person regarding of the rules regarding concerning that group uh, that person are, is that person is to be washed and to be prayed over so the person say shaheed so in the battle uh, with the kuffar that the person died so he's referred to as a shaheed of the thing that they mentioned that you know that uh, sort of general thing that the one who dies, they are said to be shuhada, but to specify this person, so there are certain rules that applies to them. So regarding of those who are discussed between the ulama, is such a person that they are to be washed and to be prayed upon. So you have a khilaf between the ulama, jumhur of the ulama, or that that person, that they are not to be washed. So the jumhur of the ulama, they owe that that person is not to be washed. And uh, as we discussed concerning takf- uh, in his uh, takfir, that also that... Uh, <coughs> their uh, heads are not to be covered Nam. so they're somewhat and also when they are washed they'll be washed normally but also there's certain exemption for them of those things for the shaheed that when he's washed then uh, that, that uh, some uh, they are not to be washed and some mentioned they are to be washed but the jumhur of the ulama and that's the correct view that they are not to be washed Nam. as the prophet and the prophet al-islam regarding concerning those concerning uhud he didn't wash them there was no ghusl that was made for them. They were washed concerning uh, <coughs> in the clothes that they died in. So uh, if they were in any other thing concerned, they may be, uh, they're wearing like uh, helmets, battlefield helmets, or they're wearing, we say today, they may be wear some type of, you know, vests, uh, armory, then those things to be removed. But they remain in their clothing that they died in. Uh, so said, you know, uh, some of the ulama, all that, you know, it can be done, uh, type of thing but uh, 
based upon concern and now what is the, prop, the, the practice among the prop, prop, Prophet al Islam with majority of those who die shuhada that he did not, they were not washed. So that's concerning the qawl that is more correct. A second group of people that are discussed, so let's discuss concerning shaheed. Regarding concerning shaheed, remember another group of people who are called referred to as shaheed. It's like concerning that the person who died from uh, uh, ta'un, from a plague. The one who died, a woman who died in uh, giving birth. Nam. So you have a certain group of people that they are referred to in some hadith as being uh, shaheed. But <coughs> the rules of, uh, of the shaheed on the battlefield is not applied to them. Right? So you have certain cases of certain group of people that they refer to as shuhada. But they are not per se, they are shaheed because the way that they died, they died of they were burnt. Or they drowned. Or the woman who gave birth, uh, giving birth and she died. Or someone who died from a stomach, uh, from having internal problems, or a person who fell from a very high place. So these people refer to as shaheed, but they are not, uh, are they uh, to be washed? Washed and the likes, as that will be of the shaheed who died on the battlefield. The Jamur of the ulama, all the ja- uh, may mention as well, they are not. So they're not included in the rules of a shaheed that would be applied to the person who died on the battlefield. Nam. So even though they refer to as being shaheed. Then uh, <coughs> when I mentioned that these are shuhada, they are shahood concerning, you have the same thing, shaheed uh, fi dunya wa shaheed fi al-akhira. Shaheed fi dunya regarding concerning a person who, that uh, they died on the battlefield. Shaheed fi al-akhira, those people are referred to as shaheed, but uh, in a sense of their reward is that of a shaheed in the akhira. But not per se that they died in the battlefield in the, the dunya. So that's the difference. So you have those two, uh, those group of people that are referred to as shaheed or shuhada. One who died on the battlefield, the rules are somewhat different for them as a form of showing honoring them. So they're not per se. And we discussed concerning that there's also no salat to be made upon them as to be discussed. Uh, so that also will be discussed in the next, uh, this later on. So regarding concerning shaheed, the one who died on the battlefield, there's no ghusl. The one who died by these type of deaths of uh, uh, being burnt, drowned, ta'hoon from a type of plague, they refer to as shaheed by way of reward, but not shaheed by way of the rules of shaheed regarding janazah. They apply, the rules that apply to them are that of a normal person. They are washed uh, normally, uh, type of thing, and covered as normally. Then also the ulama discuss another group of people that uh, regarding al-ghusl, uh, we mentioned concerning uh, <coughs> the person who died by way of is to be washed. Regarding they mentioned some ad concern, they mentioned shaheed and also they mention uh, maqtul dhulman, that, they, that are exempted from the rules of ghusl, the shaheed. And second, they mention also maqtul dhulman, the person who was killed wrongfully. So the person who was killed wrongfully, was murdered wrongfully, is such a person also to be washed or not to be washed. Right? So uh, the more correct view is that such a person who was killed wrongfully is to be washed and uh, the rules of ghusl apply to them. Nam, so that person, they are not, they are not to be, the rule of, that applies to the shaheed is not applied to them. Nam, so even though so the ulama mentioned that group of people of maqtul dhulman. Also a second group of another uh, uh, group that is mentioned regarding are they to be washed. Uh, they mentioned regarding concerning uh, the group which is, uh, they mentioned a sikht. A sikht is that uh, child who was, uh, uh, as we have different, different cases. So they said that uh, the, the child who came out, uh, they said that stillborn. Naam? But they put them in different category. So the stillborn is a child when they came out, they were passed away. So either they find that stillborn in a sense of one, first group of stillborn, they refer to the child came out, Naam? but and they, you know, that's, they, would, uh, they cried immediately, at their, but then they, immediately after they died. Or when they came out, they made some movements. In the case that they had life, but then immediately after, they died. So normal pregnancy, seven months, eight months, nine months, the child came out, was delivered, cried, 
or made some type of movements, show that they had life, but soon after they died. Such a child is washed and buried and prayed over. So even though an infant, but they're still to be washed and to be prayed upon. So so that that child is the one who came out, make some sound, you know, the, the, uh, the cried, <coughs> then soon after died, or didn't make any sound, but made move, move, movements, indicating that they had life. So in that case, they, they are washed and buried over normally. And that's the ittifaqa imat al-arba. So the ittifaqa amongst the ulama, al-arba, regarding that child from the Hanafiya, the Malikiya, the Shafi'iya, and the Hanabila, and some even mentioned there's an ijma, that such case, that child is to be washed and the likes. Then uh, <coughs> the next case is regarding that, uh, that child, stillborn, where came out, uh, didn't make any sound, but they are above the age of four months. So the child is above the age of, or they, that, uh, uh, ab above the age of four months. So for example, the child is six months inside the womb of the mother, came out, was delivered, but when it was delivered, the child immediately died. Didn't make any sound, any movement. Naam? So it was a stillborn when the child was seven months, six months upon deliverance that the child was pronounced dead. In that case, is this child to be washed? And we'll discuss also to be prayed upon. So you'll find all of my all concern that, you know, that they mentioned that. In that case, also that child will be washed. Because there they mentioned that the, the deciding factor would be if the child is below four months, then no washing. Above four months, then they're to be washed. So the deciding factor would be four months. As they mentioned, four months were at that point that the ruh, the soul, is placed into the child. So they're considered to be now fully a person. Where they're deserving certain rights. So of those things that they are to be, to be washed. And that's the view concerning that. Uh, the view concerning there too. If they are uh, below, above four months, they are to be washed. Uh, that's the view of, uh, of some of the ulama. Some mentioned, hey, and below four months, then the rules are a bit somewhat different. If they're below four months, still born, then uh, they are not to be washed. But if they're above four months old, and uh, even if they didn't make any sound or movements upon birth, upon uh, delivery, they're to be washed. Uh, so that's concerning that particular uh, matter. They discuss concerning the person, the next group of individuals regarding ghusl is regarding the person who's a, uh, who went for mahram. Uh, the person who went for uh, for Hajj or for Umrah? Now, so the person performing Hajj and Umrah and in there uh, performing Hajj, is such a person if they were to be died, are they to be that they are to be washed? Right? Uh, but their heads are to be uncovered and also for the female or face. Now, so there be a general concern they still and they are still wear the attire of the person in the, uh, of, uh, the attire concerning of Al-Hajj or Umrah, the Ihram garment. Nam? So that's concerning those uh, people, the general thing that they are not to be washed. They are not to be uh, washed. And uh, so that's concerning uh, that particular matter. But uh, and more them to be washed. Hey, they are to be washed. But... Uh, when washing, a sar said that they are to be washed, but when washing, there's no perfume that to be put in the water or on their garment. Because all the rules that apply to ihram will still apply to them. Mm. Nam, so they are washed, but with water without any fragrance. Nam, and because they are in muhrim, then their heads would be uh, uncovered. Nam, so that's concerning those group of people regarding uh, being Ghusl being, uh, being given to them. So the, th that specific person who dies on Umrah mm. and is buried, destined in Ihram until the end of the day. Until Yom Al Qiyamah. Yom Al Qiyamah. As when they rise, 
Yom Resurrection, they'll be rising with their giving at Talibiyah. Oh, no? So that's concerning to that. So I said those exception to rules because of exception either concerning Mujahid, Daifi Sabilillah, gave his life. So certain uh, as a form of uh, honoring that person, then there's different rules applied to them regarding burial. Also we mentioned regarding concerning the stillborn that uh, is known at what stage of that stillborn they are allowed to be washed or not to be washed. I'll mention above four months then the rule, they can be washed. Nam, uh, they will mention uh, the muhrim, whether male or female, if they died in performing hajj or umrah, then uh, certain they are washed, but some rules are different regarding them. So that's concerning those group of people <coughs> regarding washing. So inshallah ta'ala, with that then we'll continue from what comes next as he discussed concerning the fort of those uh, discussion regarding Ahkam al-Ghusl. So we had ended concerning uh, some of the matters that relates to al-Ghusl. Now we discuss concerning uh, takfin, which is the person being shrouded. Tafaddal. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Qalu ma'alif hafidahullah. Chapter 30, <coughs> death and burial, page number 304. Fourthly, Rulings on shrouding. After washing and drying the body of the deceased, it is to be put in a shroud that must cover all his body. It is desirable to use a white, clean shroud, whether new, which is better or not. The obligatory size of the shroud is that which covers the whole body of the deceased. It is desirable to shroud the deceased man in three shrouds of cloth and the woman in five pieces of cloth, a loin cloth a veil, a shirt, and two shrouds. As for the deceased children, a boy is to be shrouded in one shroud, yet three are permissible, and a girl in one shirt and two shrouds. It is also desirable to subject the shroud to a censer, after being sprinkled with rose water or the like, so that the scent of the incense would remain in the shroud. Hey, so the author, Allah, is discussed concerning next month concerning uh, shrouding of the deceased or the, the deceased so regarding concern they mentioned that uh, it will be something like a plain piece of garment like this now so the person they usually plain garment uh, type of thing that uh, so it is wajib that at least one piece of cloth to be used to cover the entire body some of the older all that is uh, the entire body those who mentioned that's not majority and um, so uh, in quick, so that uh, one concerning that uh, of the ahkam that relates to uh, shrouding, first concern that the ulama mentioned that the hukum of shrouding the person, that it is fard kifaya. So regarding the person being shrouded by some of the Muslim, that is a duty that is expected to be, it's a duty that is expected to be fulfilled by at least some of the Muslim. And uh, so it becomes, is classed as fard kifaya, where it is required where those are, uh, where some of the Muslim that uh, needs to perform this act uh, on behalf of uh, the entire Ummah. Then they mention regarding concerning that, uh, and that matter, they say is an ijma between the ulama regarding it is far kifaya, regarding shrouding of the person, as mentioned by Anaw Rahimahullah. Then they mention regarding concerning, as for that piece of garment that a person is uh, covered with, or shrouded with, then one, one garment to cover the entire body is wajib, but prefer, uh, as for what is preferred, they said mustahab, that uh, or all concerning for the male, that is three, three pieces of garment. For the female, they mention five pieces of garments. Uh, so those are the things that are uh, re, uh, more said than preferred to be done. For the child also, one piece or three piece can be used also for the child. So these are concerned, it's not what is preferred, but what is the least is that the person must be covered. Uh, one sheet that covers the entire body uh, of the the person. Ayawa. The man is to be shrouded by using the three shrouds <coughs> over each other, then it is to be brought covered with a garment or the like, as it is obligatory to be covered, and to be put laying, laying with his face upwards on the three shrouds. Then a perfume piece of cloth, cotton, is to be put between <coughs> the buttocks, covering the anus of the deceased and fastened by tying a piece of cloth. Other similar perfume cotton pieces are to be put on the eyes, nostrils, mouth, ears, 
and the parts of prostration, i.e. the forehead and the nose, both hands, both knees, and the bottom of the toes, under the armpits, the inner parts of the knees, and on the navel. The washer should also apply some perfume between the shrouds and onto the head. After that, the washer wraps the left side of the upper shroud, on which the deceased is lying faced up, over the right side, and its right side over his left side. Then the same is to be done with the second <coughs> and the third shrouds. The sufflorious parts of the shroud should be longer towards the head than the feet. Then such remaining parts towards the head are to be gathered and put over his face and those towards his feet over his feet. Afterwards, the belts of the cloth are tied around the shrouds so as not to unwrap or loosen in the grave. Thank you. Hey, Rahim, Allah, this can somewhat give us a general idea regarding how to uh, shroud the, the deceased. These sometimes, with these things, require like a, a person to have an experience. Require not to you know, experience another person can actually see it be done. But it's just a general uh, idea that a person is to be shrouded in the manner described, but it requires some practical examples. Hey, you are. As for a deceased woman, as mentioned above, she is to be shrouded in five pieces of cloth, a loin cloth, a shirt, a veil, and two shrouds. There's a concern, so that's to be for male and for female regarding, as mentioned for the man, three pieces of cloth. As for female, uh, five pieces prefer to be done. Overall, uh, that the entire body is to be shrouded for both male and females. They mentioned that, uh, the Olema mentioned that uh, also of those things they added, that uh, it's more preferred that uh, the color or the cloth that is used, it is uh, bead, which it is white. And mentioned the hadith, as mentioned by Nawr al hadith of Ibn Abbas, Anuhuma, Qal, uh, and Nabi Islam, Qal, Albisu, Min Thiyabikum Al Bayda, that you should wear from amongst your garments white. Many a, Fainaha, Min Khair Thiyabikum, as this is from the best of your garments, Wakafinu Fiha Motakum, and also for you to uh, shroud your deceased in this uh, cloth that is of white. So regarding concerning white, but it's not compulsory. So if there's other, if the person unable to find white, then whatever color that is uh, available can be used, but it's preferred that the color be white. So that's concerning some of those akam that relates to uh, a takfin, which is generally concerning that uh, how to cover or to shroud the deceased. So that in short ta'ala, this week we'll stop there, and uh, next week continue. Be on the subhanahu wa ta'ala.